Hello everyone, Farmabil welcomes you all busy people to yet another learning video. In this video, we will learn about the Form 483 observations of uh, Torrent Pharma. As you might be aware of the fact that uh, USFDA has published Torrent Pharma's Form 483 on their website. So guys, Indrad Ahmedabad Gujarat facility of the Torrent Pharma was inspected by USFDA in the month of September. From 19th of September to 28th of September 2022. It was almost 8 days audit if we exclude Saturdays and Sundays. There were two auditors who conducted the audit and their names were Jose E. Melendez and Pratik S. Upadhyay. So guys, these two auditors has given total three number of observations. So let us understand all these observations one by one. Observation number one and the title of the observation number one is Equipments and the utensils were not cleaned appropriately to prevent contaminations. Under this observation, auditors has given eight examples. So let us understand all these examples one by one. Example number one. Your manual cleaning procedure for the non-dedicated manufacturing equipment was inadequate. It does not ensure the removal of the residue of previously manufactured product. Now the question arises why auditors said like this. So answer to this question lies in the following example which I am going to explain you now. On 19th of September 2022, auditors observed residue of white powder on the equipment surfaces. Detail of the equipment is not revealed in the form 483 as you can see on the screen. Now this particular equipment was used to manufacture batches which were meant for the US market. After identifying the white residue powder on the equipment surface, on same day swab sample was taken from the equipment and after analysis results indicated the presence of residue of previously manufactured product. So because of this reason, auditors stated that your manual cleaning procedure is inadequate. So this was the first example mentioned under the observation number one. Now let us see second example mentioned under the observation number one. Example number two, your cleaning method used for the testing of the swab samples is inadequate. Now let us understand why auditors said like this. Actually on 19th of September 2022, during the swab samples analysis, auditors observed that collector swab samples sticks heads were not completely immersed in the diluent. Only 70% part of the swab sticks heads were immersed in the diluent. So as swab sticks heads were not immersed completely into the diluent, therefore auditors said that if swab sticks heads are not dipped completely into the diluent, then this will not allow the complete extraction of the residue from the swab stick head during the sample preparation and obtained results of such swab samples will be inaccurate. So this was the reason because of which auditors said that your analytical cleaning method used for the testing of the swab samples is inadequate. Example number three. Well, friends, auditors has verified the cleaning validation study report of automated glassware washing machine. And they found that for deciding the worst case scenario, certain factors were not evaluated like size of the glassware, quantity of the glassware, position and the orientation of the glassware, etc. In addition to this, auditors mentioned that there were substantial number of incidents were raised with respect to presence of the unknown peaks. Since April 2019, approximately 70 incidents and OS were raised related to the unknown peaks. Example number 4. On 19th of September 2022, auditors observed white powder residue and the flakes on the equipment surface. However, equipment was tagged as a cleaned. One interesting thing auditors did and mentioned in the form 483 that they have taken the photograph of this discrepancy and here you can see that it is mentioned that the picture taken to demonstrate the observed issue. Now comes the next example mentioned under observation number one. Under this example, auditors stated that your manufacturing unit and the quality unit were failed to identify the equipment defects and has deviated the written procedure related to the equipment line clearance. So as per equipment line clearance checklist, one checkpoint is mentioned related to the checking and verifying the equipment parts for any kind of cracks or the damage. So on 20th of September 2022, auditors observed dents and scratches on the inner surface of the equipment. Example number six. As per this example, auditors found that swab sample solutions were not analyzed within the solution validity. 
Detail of these observations are masked as you can see on the screen. Along with this, Oiters has also mentioned that the swab samples of the light sensitive products were collected in the transparent test tubes. And this may lead to the degradation of the swab solution and results generated will be inaccurate. So these were the examples mentioned under observation number one. Now let us understand observation number two. Title of the observation number two is there was a failure to thoroughly review any unexplained discrepancy. Under this observation, Oiters stated that there was a cascade failure in your firm's laboratory investigations related to the extraneous peaks and the unknown peaks. Your firm has frequently invalidated OOS and laboratory incident investigations without any root cause identification. Here you can see the examples related to the extraneous peaks incidents. Around 19 examples are mentioned in this form 483. And for all these extraneous peak incidents, root cause was concluded as a glassware contamination. But further source of contamination was not identified. Now here you can see two examples of the OOS investigations mentioned which were reviewed by the auditors during the inspection. So these two OOS were logged for the related substances test where unknown impurities results were observed out of specification. Root cause for these OOS were concluded as contamination of the HPLC file. But there was no scientific rationale or the justification provided that how the vials were contaminated. Along with these two examples, auditors has given two interesting statements. And the first one is that your firm's investigation practices continues to be deficient. Second statement is that whatever the OOS and incident related discrepancies identified by the auditors, they were related to only those products which were marketed in the USA. However, there are many such examples for the domestic and ROW marketed products. Now let us understand another example mentioned under observation number two. So guys, what happened? Third party consultant has reviewed the all invalid OOS related to the US marketed products. And the main purpose of the third party review was to assess the accuracy of the investigation reports with respect to root cause and whether or not the scientific rationale is available or not. So during the review, third party consultant has given a few observations where root cause or the investigation was not proper. In response to that, Torrent Pharma has amended the investigation reports. But those amended reports were not subsequently reviewed by the third party consultant. Therefore, auditors raised the concern and stated that your firm has not addressed the gaps identified in your investigations adequately. Now comes the observation number three and the title of the observation number three is Written investigation records of the drug products do not include the findings of the investigation and follow-ups. So under this observation, auditors mentioned that your product complaint investigations were deficient. If you will read this observation, then you will come to know that auditors has mentioned two SOPs for which the written procedures were not followed. First one is related to the procedures for handling of the drug product complaints that is CQA 145. And second one is related to the field alert reports that is CQA triple one. So as per CQA 145, retained sample should be tested while investigating any complaint sample. What auditors observed that for this complaint number, the retained sample was not tested. Now comes the second SOP, which is related to the reporting of the field alert reports of the drug products. So here you can see that auditors mentioned that for this complaint number, FAR was submitted after one day delay. So guys, these were the three observations which were issued by USFDA to Torrent Pharma Indrad Gujarat facility. Whatever examples mentioned in the form 483, we have understood all of them. If you still want to know more about these observations, then you can check the link given in the description or you can visit the USFDA website to download the form 483. So this is it for today. Hope you have learned something new today. Bye bye and happy learning.